thank you, worship team. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I didn't want to quit. Go ahead. Good job. Good job. And I messed them up a little bit there, but that's my fault. We won't blame them for that. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If God's ever brought you out of anything, can you give him praise one time? <laughs> You're a V8 and you're going, you know, you do 
But the drivetrain makes the thing move. The body is what touches all the worldly parts, the ground, all the elements, everything is the body, and then the interior. Here's what I know when I went and bought red cars and repaired them. If a, one of those three things is broke, I can fix it and make money. If one of those three things, if it's wrecked in the front end, I can fix it. If it's got a bad motor, I can rebuild it. If the interior's trash, I can replace it. One of three things I can fix. But when it gets to two things, an example of that would be it's been hit right here in the front, and the windshield got busted, and the airbags went off, and for three months it's been sitting at the insurance lot, and it's raining every day, it's in Oregon, so the interior's ruined and the body's ruined. So now, I've got to repair the body, and I've got to repair the interior. Two out of three ain't bad, except two out of three is real bad. So what do you do? You just don't buy that car, it remains in the junkyard. Because there's too much effort and money going into it to repair it. Did you know that the enemy knows that we are three parts? The enemy knows that we are three parts. Let's back it up to God Himself. God the Father... God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. How many parts is that? Three parts. I mean, remember the temple in the Old Testament. Inner court, outer court, holy of holies. He's laid this out this way. You are one of, you are created in that image with three parts. Let me share those with you. And before you start, I don't need a, an email or a district. It's certainly, if you want to send it, you can correct me. That's fine. The goal is not to break down the three parts today. That's not the goal. The goal is to explain about the three parts. So the first part you have is a body. Right? You have a fleshly body. Then you have a soul and a spirit. You have a body, a soul, and a spirit. Now we could dissertate for the next 40 hours about the difference between a soul and a spirit, but it's not going to benefit us today. So here's what I want to break down. You have a body, a soul, and a spirit, just like a car has three parts. And the enemy understands that you are three parts. And he knows something that Christians today don't always know. He knows that the body is dead. Now, like that or not, here's the truth. Your body was born into sin, and the day you were born, it started dying. The body is dead. At some point, if God tarries His coming and you live to be 120, the body will die. Dust is made up out of 96 elements. There's 96 elements in the human body. We will return to dust. The body is already dead. So we're working against ourselves already. Then you have a spirit and a soul. The spirit, in my opinion, connects to God. My opinion, again, I'm not going into dissertation on that because I'm not just not. The soul is your will and your mind and, and, and your emotions. So here's what the enemy knows. You've already got one strike against you. If he can get another strike against you, the reality is he can put you in a junkyard and you will never be valuable again. So he cannot steal your spirit that is from God, right? So what's he going to work on? Your soul, your mind. Now think about this. How many times have born again, God-filled, spirit-filled men and women of God lost the battle in their own life because their mind was persuaded that the enemy was right and that God was not right? The bank says this, the doctor says this, and the enemy says to your mind or your soul, if you will, spirit, if you'd rather call it that, but he begins to speak to it, and he begins to tell you everything that possibly could go wrong on planet Earth. Yep, yep. So here's what he's saying. The body's crashed, but the motor's bad too. So it's junk. And he's telling you you're no good. And he's telling you you're not worth it. And he's telling you there's no way. And if we, the body of Christ, don't do what God said to us, he said, don't be conformed to the world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The war isn't going on in your body. 
You say, well, sickness is in my body. Your body's going to die no matter what. The war is in your mind. And when the enemy steals your mind, then he makes you feel like there's nothing left worth sobbing. And as the body of Christ, we're saved and on our way to heaven, defeated all the way. Because the enemy has convinced us that we lose. The enemy has convinced us the pain will never get better. The enemy has convinced us that the emotional stress will never get better. The enemy has convinced us we will never have anything. And all the while God is saying to you, I came to give you life and life more abundantly. Now I'm not talking about riches because honestly I don't give a rip either way. And to be honest with you, God is talking about a spiritual richness that is inside of you. But until the body of Christ stops looking for the deepest and latest and to the most magnificent thing of God and grasps the concept that the enemy is crushing us in our own minds. Amen. If you admit it, probably more than half of us walked in here this morning with a mind boggled down with things of this earth. And Vicki gave a clue this morning. I won't go there yet. But she gave a clue. Here's what he said in Scripture. If you're going to be transformed, it will happen in your mind, not your heart. Yeah, good job, friends. Because here's what happens. Beware the... Victor's crown. We might as well be singing troublesome times are here. <laughs> Filling his hearts with fear. Freedom we all hold dear. Now is at stake. Can I tell you something? They may lock me away in jail tomorrow, but they'll never steal my freedom. The doctor may say you've got two weeks to live and I'm going to party for two weeks for Jesus. Because reality says this. If you give your mind over to the enemy, you're never going to be good enough. And God's all the while going, yeah, here's the line I have for you. And here's the line you're traveling. Yes, you accepted me as Savior, but I wanted to use you. I wanted to bring you out. I wanted to do things in you. And the enemy knows that your body's already dead. And if he can steal one more thing, your spirit or your soul, he's going to win the battle. And we need to be the body of Christ and say this. I will not conform to this world. I will be transformed. I will be doing it on my mind. But let's talk reality. I hope most of the people in here have a job or you're retired. So you spend a good portion of your day working. And at the end of the day, after a little TV and a little game on your phone and, and a little food, and at the end of the day, Father, forgive me my sins today. I love you. Catch you in the morning. But he said the Word of God is sharp and powerful. In fact, Hebrews 4.12 says, In a minute it says, there you go. <laughs> For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, of soul and spirit, and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and in the intents of hearts. <laughs> We sing about taking thoughts captive and we go home and dive into negative thoughts head first. It's almost like someone's got our head in a negative toilet upside down flushing to get a swirly going on in our brains. Now I know that's graphic, but hear me today. How many of you have been defeated this week by your own mind? Because the enemy said, the enemy said, the enemy said to hell with what the enemy said. Amen. What did God say? Because until I transform my mind by renewing it with what God said, and if we're real, 
our money, but if, to give God 10% of our day would kill us. Come on, preacher, you know I'm right. That's right. Amen. right. We talked about this this week about a preacher that said he could be ready for the whole week in 10 minutes or 20 minutes on Monday morning. And I'm thinking, I was up at, at midnight last night going over my notes. I was up at 4.30 again this morning going over my notes. And I'm thinking, I want to be that guy because I'm not. Because I need every ounce of God I can get to stand up here. Because most of the time, the enemy tells me I'm a failure up here. And to use a plastic car, and I'm thinking, God, how stupid is this? In first service, someone comes to me and said, I just lost my uncle, and he was a car guy. And you will never know what you just spoke to my heart. And I'm thinking, I didn't speak anything the Holy Spirit did. And how many times are you defeated in your own mind? How many times does the thought run through and we grab a hold of it? Well, you know what? You know what? I think there's going to be 11 cents short in the bank. So, oh no. Oh no. That means, oh God. Oh no. That means by the end of the week, I'm going to be $2,948. What? What are you talking about? Well, I, 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 I. You know what? I fall back into the dish for 15 times. I'm just, you know, it's going to happen again. I'm just waiting for it to happen again. Really? Is that no. what God said? Not coming in no. Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Come on. We're going to win. Yes. Amen. But the only way we're going to win is if we understand that the enemy is trying to take, your spirit is trying to serve God, your body's on the way out anyway, and you've got this little narrow margin of your soul that if you don't get control of your mind and your emotions and begin to seek God with all that you are in those areas of your life, you're going to lose a battle that God never intended for you to lose. And then we become a victim and we feed this monster and everything's coming against me and everything, stop it! I feel the Holy Ghost all over this. There are people here today that hit them on side that God will set you free. Today, right here, right now, He would break the bondage of your mind if you would give your mind to Him and say, I'm not going to buy the enemy. You know what? When the doctor says this, or the world says this, or the enemy says this, or this, or this, Cast it against God's word. And if it doesn't line up, cast it out. Rebuke it. Get it out of it. It doesn't belong there. I've been standing in a pulpit for 14 years feeling unworthy. And every week I buy into what God said. I called you. And every week I get up and do it again anyway. And every night tonight... 3 a.m. while you're tucked in your bed, I'm going to be going over every word I said, chewing on it, meditating on it, imagining how bad I screwed it up. <coughs> Can you relate? And tomorrow morning, I'm going to quit the ministry at about 6.45 a.m. At about 7.30, I'm going to be sitting right in that office getting ready to do it again. <laughs> because I cannot believe what the enemy's saying. That's right. Some of you are going to be lonely from now on because the enemy's told you you're not worthy of having somebody. He's a liar from the pits of hell. Amen. Some of you are going to be broke from now on because the mentality that the enemy has given you is that you're going to be broke from now on and God did not want that for your life. I'm not saying he wanted you rich, but he wanted you to survive. But our mind takes us places. Well, I got cancer, and I begin to meditate on it. Guess what? The cancer eats me alive because God wanted to heal the cancer, but I couldn't get my mind to line up with the Spirit of God that resides inside of me and said, it lined up with the Holy of God in any way, and I followed exactly what the body said, and it took me straight to the grave. And you say, well, you'll only die when it's God's time. You better read the book, because he says you can shorten your days. Trust me when I tell you this. That if your mind lines up with God's will, Hezekiah, God said, sent the prophet to Hezekiah and said, get your house ready, it's over. And Hezekiah said, God, I've served you. I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. The prophet of God was almost back home. God told the prophet, turn around, go back, and tell him I'm going to give him 15 more years. Don't buy the lie of the enemy. 
And you will win or lose in one of three parts. Your spirit's going to win if you're a born-again child of God. Your body's going to lose because that's what it's designed to do. It, it was birthed there in the Garden of Eden. If we ever understood that, we wouldn't stress so bad about what's going on in the body because at the end of the day, it's going to pass on anyway. <coughs> so the war for my very soul is going to be fought right here. <coughs> and I win or lose right here. I win or lose right here. Now think about that. If I'm a born again child of God and he starts it like this, I beg you, brethren, he's talking to the saved folks. You ever heard the old song, Altar in the Door? Miss Diane, you remember the old song by Casting Grounds? You don't? It says, between the altar and the door, and I can get it right, right here, and I'm on top of the world. I'm the king of my castle. Everything's going good. And by the time I get back there, the enemy has me so whipped, I'm not sure if I'm saved by the time I get to the car. God delivered me from fear right here, and I'm afraid to open the car door, afraid it might blow up before I get back in it. I'm not that important. Nobody wants to kill me. Well, if they do, well, whatever. I don't know. Church, listen. You want delivered, you're going to be delivered in your mind. You want set free, you're going to be set free in your mind or you're going to lose in your mind. God's already finished the work. It's done. He did it 2,000 years ago on Calvary. It's done. We're begging Him to do what's already done. And I'm not being a jerk to you this morning and I'm not being rude, but I, as your pastor and friend and a mentor over you in some form or capacity, am sick of watching you be beat down every single week when God gave you the ability and the authority and the power and the anointing to overcome it. We can't worship because we're so beat down in spirit. When I get my mind right, I'll know He's worthy of worship no matter what's going on in my body. When I get my mind right, I'll know He's King of kings and Lord of lords. And all of a sudden the mindset begins to be transformed. Can you fathom <coughs> what it would be like To live one day of your life without worry? Come on, think about it. I know, I've been hard on you guys the last few weeks. I've been talking about love your neighbor stuff. <laughs> what would it be like if you left here today free of fear? What would it be like if you left here today free of the emotional bondage that we have allowed in our brains. I can't even say the enemies put it there. I say I've allowed in my brain. Because God says I've not given you a spirit of fear. God says take every thought captive. God says that we have weapons that can overcome any stronghold. If you just don't know my stronghold. No, actually what I know is this. You just lost your battle because you said your stronghold was bigger than your God. You just lost your battle. When does it end? When does it end? Because today, by the power of the Holy Ghost, am I wrong? Is the Holy Spirit? He wants to set people free today. Right here, right now. And when the enemy comes in, you start praying in the Holy Ghost. When the enemy comes in, you grab your Bible and I'll make you a promise. God will give you a... If it's nothing more than one little psalm, and it may not relate to anything else, but it'll relate to your heart because God is wanting to speak to your heart and your soul and your spirit. And He wants to change and set free. I love this one, Kathy. I'm going to say this with you, just me and you talking. But... Break every chain. Break every... Do you ever watch them sing it like that? You ever watch people sing it like that? I, think, I hope it's a plastic chain they got at home. Because <laughs> this is what I like to sing. For you wear the victor's crown! I can't sing for squat, but I'll tell you one thing. 
I'm up here shouting the big word. <laughs> Power in the blood may not be a worship song. It may speak to the heart more than to God. But there's power! Amen. You better be ready to talk tonight because I ain't going to be able. <laughs> no problem. Church, you win or lose on the thoughts you take captive in your mind. Amen. If you're a born-again child of God, you're going to win or lose on the choice in your brain. That's right. So your situation ain't going the way you want? Suck it up. It'll be okay. Right. Your body isn't doing what you want it to? Believe me, I know that one. Six pills every night, you better not set up quick in the morning because the blood pressure still might make you fall on the floor. <laughs> Thank God for those wooden rails, right? Because I can grab a hold of them. <laughs> But if the Lord allows, I'm going to crawl out of that bed again in the morning. I'm going to share to you with somebody. And you're going to win or lose right here. It's up to you. Now that's crazy, isn't it? That God said, I'm going to give you the free will and the choice to do this. But then he says things like, don't be conformed to this world. In fact, he says things like this, I'm begging you. I'm begging you, don't. Father, why? I got a hush. Do you know that there are people that come for prayer? I'm probably going to make some of them mad. But you come for prayer, and you don't want me to pray for you. What you want is for me to agree with you in your sorrow. <coughs> and when I want, you get mad and find somebody that will. You ever wonder why people take counsel from 87 people? Because they're trying to get somebody to line up with their thinking. They're not really trying to hear from God. And if you just be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind by a word of God that is so powerful that it can separate soul and spirit, body, bone, and marrow, Beautiful lady named Sue, not our Sue, another Sue. I was about this big, probably. And she was beat up with cancer. And she said, The Bible said, Call for the elders and bring them in. I'm believing. The doctor said, You got about four days. The elders come and prayed over her. She said, I feel fine. The doctor said, I don't know what happened, but you went in remission. Go home. There's more to the story. She went home and her family convinced her just how sick she was. The cancer come raging back and about two weeks later she was gone. She was healed and then died from the very disease that God healed her from. Right there. You can leave here today free or you can leave here a victim. And no one can choose that for you. No one. But I come to tell you by the power of the Holy Ghost, if you're genuine with God, see, that's why I like to worship like that. Remember Dave Reaver, the guy that got burned up in Vietnam, heat up in Vietnam? He said if you cry, it makes God think you're serious when you're praying, right? So that's a, that's a joke. But I figured, you know what? If I can get serious about shouting about my ducks, I can get serious about shouting about my God. That's right. Right. Amen. And if I can worship with everything in me, then I figure, you know what? I might as well just believe everything else that he said. <coughs> the Holy Spirit of God is inside of you if you're born again. Whether you're filled with the Spirit, baptized or not, you needed the Spirit to get where you're at. And it is raging a war with your soul to win. And you're going to have to determine to fight either on the side of the thing that's dying, that's attached to the world, the worldly conscious part, that's this one, or the spiritually conscious side. Just like that car. If I can get two on the side of good, I'm going to make 
a nice car. And if the enemy can get two on the side of bad, and we know your body's already on the wrong side, <coughs> then he's going to tell you you're not worth saving. You're not worth fixing. And you're going to buy a lie. And it's time, God's people. There's enough people in this room that if they truly got sold out for God to a point that they were free from the bondage of the enemy, this city wouldn't have a chance. They get saved whether they liked it or not. But folks, listen. When you leave here today, you're going to have choices in your mind. Are you going to follow God or the enemy? God or the enemy? Fear or faith? What are you going to choose? Because God is in heaven right now. I believe shouting for you to choose the right side. He sent me here today to tell you. And I believe you with everything in me. That if you truly want free, you come up here. We're going to anoint you with oil. Miss Vicky's going to come and pray over people. And we're going to expect God to do something. And when the enemy brings that negative thought back into your mind this afternoon, you're going to laugh in his face. One more thought, I'm done. About once a week, I wake up and my leg says, Gotcha. And about four seconds later, here's what happened. God healed me of leg cramps. Get out. And he's never one time let it stay. It never can, can fully develop, but he tries. I've been, I've been four and a half years without a leg cramp. And for four and a half years, he's been trying at least once a week to give me one. But this is what I know. While I struggled with other sickness in my body, he took those. And I refused to allow the enemy to have that back. What are you going to decide today that the enemy no longer has authority over you in? What are you going to decide? Stand with me if you will. Father, I pray right now in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. God, I believe with everything in me that you want to heal people today. You birthed this word in me, and while I may not be able to present it the way that I should, I present with everything that I have. And I'm asking you today that for those that are willing to step out, and they are tired of the mundane, and they are tired of the defeat, and they are tired of walking in fear and anxiety and everything else, that today, Lord, that you would minister to their hearts, their minds, their souls, their spirit, their body, dear God, that you would literally tell them, today is your day. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of deliverance. Somebody give him praise of his own. God, I am not asking you for something you didn't promise. But if your son took stripes for healing, then there is no reason we should not be able to receive what he paid for on Calvary. And if he took a crown of thorns on his head that we might have peace, and he said, my peace, I leave with you, then God, I'm not asking you for a Cadillac. I'm not asking you for riches. I'm asking you for what you promised me on Calvary. You promised. And for those that will receive it today, I'm asking you to give it liberally and abundantly. And break the chains. Don't let them sing chain breaker with their hands in their pockets. Let them jerk their arms across. It's symbolically breaking the chains. Give the church today in these last days the freedom we need. Let our minds be fixed on you. Your precious name. They're going to place on this altar's open. Someone will meet you here. Come on, don't wait. We're not staying all day. We got chairs. Come on. <laughs>